I watched Napoleon a while back, and I was disappointed. Let's talk about it. Pacing. The pacing was a prominent issue for me, even though the film had a runtime of 2 hours 40, and as runtimes go, it's on the longer end. <laughs> However, despite its length, nice, it still felt rushed. At the start of the film, we are immediately plonked in the French Revolution, so we are introduced to Napoleon when he's around his 30s. As a result, we have missed 30 years of the man's life, and so from my perspective, it felt rather jarring. I believe if we could have seen more of Napoleon's earlier life and what had shaped him into the military dictator he'd later become, I think that would have added more value to the plot of the film and made the story feel more personal. The other pacing issue was with Josephine and Napoleon's relationship. Josephine's Napoleon's wife, by the way. And there was a scene where Josephine mentioned that they had been married for 15 years. And after she said that, I thought to myself, what? I swear it had only been two or three years or something, and throughout the film I never got the sense that they had been partnered together for that length of time. It felt a hell of a lot shorter. The impression I got from the film was that Ridley Scott was jumping to the highlights of Napoleon's career, and as a consequence, the relationship between Napoleon and Josephine suffered. Speaking about relationships... Relationships... Josephine and Napoleon's relationship annoyed me on reflection. A main point of emphasis for Mr. Scott was the letters Napoleon and Josephine would write to one another. Both Josephine and Napoleon would narrate the letters throughout the film to punctuate certain moments. For example, when Josephine is cheating on Napoleon, Napoleon is narrating his love letters to Josephine, while she's getting absolutely ploughed by this Chad. As I understand, the letters have been made public, and some of them are rather raunchy from what I hear. <coughs> You know that I will never forget our little visits. You know, the little black forest. I kiss it a thousand times and wait impatiently for the moment I will be in it. To live with Josephine is to live in the Elysian fields. Kisses on your mouth, your eyes, your breast, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> And of course there is. You are going to be here beside me, in my arms, on my breasts, on my mouth. Take wing and come, come. A kiss on your heart, and the one much lower down. Much lower. And who can forget? I don't love you anymore, on the contrary. I detest you. You are vile, mean, beastly slut. You don't write to me at all. You don't love your husband. You know how happy your letters make him. You don't write to him six lines of nonsense. Soon, I hope, I'll be holding you in my arms. Then I'll cover you in a million hot kisses. Burning, my dear Quaid. NC. Bipolar much? Also, if any of these quotes are wrong, here's where I found them. Let me know if they're incorrect. Anyway. My point is that despite these letters, we don't know how affectionate or detached they were with each other privately. The way Ridley Scott depicted their relationship, it felt as if it was loveless, yet the letters and his last words would tell us a different story. I'm not saying I know what their relationship was like, but I surely know that neither do the scriptwriters. So because we don't know what their relationship was like, we're just watching Ridley Scott's fantasized version of it rather than the potentially more boring alternative. The other relationship that irked me was after Napoleon had divorced Josephine and married the Archduchess Marie Louise of Austria because, you know, my boy needs a male heir, it's the 1800s, get with the program. The film just completely ignored this relationship. We see his second wife once or twice throughout the whole film and was never returned to. I understand Napoleon only really loved Josephine, which is shown in his actions. However, this could have been emphasised by showing the audience how he interacted with Mary Louise, which could have cemented the idea that he only loved Josephine more so. I know this is a small thing, but it's my belief that this could have added to the story instead of being brushed aside. Talking about things that were brushed aside... Historical inaccuracies... Kind of. I'm no historian. So the thing that triggered my inner historian was the scene where Napoleon's troops fired cannons at the pyramids when they were fighting in Egypt. I brushed this scene aside when I was in the cinema, yet I found myself randomly thinking of the scene at home, being like, that can't have been real. Surely some historian would have said something about this. Maybe there's a cannonball-sized crater in the side of the pyramids. 
So I did a minimal amount of research, and what I found was that nothing suggested cannonballs were flung into the side of the pyramids. If anything, I found only evidence to the contrary. I couldn't find anything that supported Napoleon's demolition job. After this, I couldn't help but feel a little bit deceived by Ridley Scott and crew. On the bright side, I did find a bunch of historian YouTubers who all happy banners. Here's some of my recommendations. They all do a better job at explaining the film's inaccuracies than I ever could, and they're all worth a watch. Right, enough about what I don't like. Let's get positive! Oh, I did like some stuff, I promise. I'm always impressed by the acting chops of Hakeem Phoenix. He was great, despite what he was given. His performance was rather convincing, and these same compliments can all be applied to the rest of the supporting cast. Especially Vanessa Kirby's performance as Josephine. Bravo. The standout scene visually for me was the Battle of Austerlitz. This was where Napoleon's forces were facing a combined might of Russia and Austria on a frozen body of water. I think it was a lake. I'm not sure. Napoleon got his opponents to retreat and bombarded them with cannon fire. And in this scene, all the visual elements clicked for me. The cinematography, the editing, the whole bloody art department. I mean, look at it. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh yes, the dichotomy between the chaotic retreat happening on the top of the ice and the sinister calmness of what was happening underneath was morbidly beautiful to watch. Although, my favourite part of the whole film was the VFX involved in watching this horse get absolutely fucked by this cannonball and probably can't show it on YouTube. All you need to know that it was very effective when watching first time. There's nothing poetic to say here, just that maybe I giggled a little bit too loudly in the cinema when it happened. Enough of me yabbering on, let's wrap this baby up. Final thoughts. If I could wave a magic wand, I would have made Napoleon into a television series. Something akin to what HBO has done for Game of Thrones, Rome or Westworld. I think this would have solved the pacing issues and we would have seen Napoleon's life in more vivid detail, yet still kept the adult themes of the movie. Instead, we just race towards the finish line, feeling apathetic that we just finished a marathon. What worries me is that this film is called Napoleon and not Ridley Scott's fictional, by no means accurate depiction of Napoleon. What this means is that some audience members will come away from the film believing everything they were shown. I'm no historian, and I know very little about Napoleonic and French history, but when I see historians and people who are well versed in the matter complain about the film, I can't help but wonder if Mr. Scott and his team are misleading us on the tale of Napoleon's life. Sometimes the truth is more exciting than the falsehoods we tell. Napoleon made me feel conflicted. It made me feel confused. It made me feel annoyed. I really wanted to love this film, but like Napoleon and Josephine's relationship in it, I didn't have any. I give this film a meh out of 10. Thank you for watching this long. I know it's different from my other uploads. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Lately fill my days are with all this amazing stuff Hardest part of the day is the wake up Trying to keep my eyes shut My butterflies feel more like a star